This is Charlie Parsons for the Stomping Ground, powered by Wow Hydrate and live and available on DAZN, El General, Eduardo. How funny was, you, you actually didn't post what I did to you the other day. Okay, so that was actually going to come out was in it? the interview today. By the way, I've gone and screenshotted it to my mum, and my mum was gassed and everything, so... Having, uh, for once, Edward decided to reply to my DMs, and I, uh, the worst thing was, you'd already replied to me, Mind and then you'd off. let it brew for five yeah. minutes and sent a follow-up. Also, you aren't going to believe this, but BBC have said they're happy for you to be one of my guests on my podcast. So I've put, <laughs> shut up, shut up, Edward, oh my god, you've made my day, Edward. I'm joking, mate, see you in Manchester. In which I responded with this incredible video. Why would you do that to me? Just because you need to be humbled. Like you used to need to be humbled every now and again. Now you need to be humbled basically daily because you are so painful as a geezer. You're a proper sore geezer. That's what you a are. A sore geezer? Yeah, what does that way, mean? Well, look at you now, right? And you've got a pink yeah, but this hat. Is style. No. Yeah, but you're not, got, you're not the same age group. You don't understand. You dress like Kevin the Teenager. You know Kevin and Perry. From Kevin and... Yeah, but you've been you've, saying this for you've years, got Edward. a Stone Island jumper wrapped round over your shoulders. Yeah. Wrapped round so your neck. So we can still get the badge in. Bush. Right, and what are those shoes? Numerous. You know, the, they sent me about 20 pairs out. And obviously, we wanted to do up the pink denim today. Why did they send you 20 pairs out? Is it because you're obviously so they were like, famous? Wow, Parsons, you're such an influencer. What a stud of a I man. mean, wow. If, uh, if by the way, you were, on, you were on my podcast yesterday because I did a podcast with Bugsy Malone. And he said, do you know, I really like your interviews. I like one of your interviews where some guy was coming on going, yeah, like, yeah, Wagwan, yeah, yeah. And you really sort of put him in his place. Oh, with brilliant. His, so he, he mugged me off. I nearly went, I nearly gave you a name check, but I thought, no, I don't want to do that. At what point? Oh, how was Tunisia's Parsons? Oh, I'm surprised yeah, that we've yeah. got... Uh, did I mention it? Because I feel no, like... No, not I really. I mean, the most painful man on social media. Me? Oh. Did says this, you. Sa no. You says, are in on, no position on. to talk. Did this really happen today? I didn't do that. Shut up. I didn't do that. that Shut was up. Only... Third, third person. Shut up. Only Parsons running a marathon in Tunisia... I didn't say that. ...with the hardest geezer. Shut up. Yeah, mate. but where were you, mate? Mate, I, I wasn't you mugging stomping. myself. I wasn't mugging. By the way, haven't seen any pictures of you running. I've done 36 okay. kilometres. Why is there no footage or pictures of you running? Because do you know how remote it was? You expected my videographer, by the way, had oh a videographer my with me. We documented the Are whole trip. Are you expecting my videographer to document <laughs> that in the beating heat of Tunisia? <laughs> you twat. Scary gaff, by the way. But you know, there's no photos of you running. But I did run. Everyone knows when you I posted. Ran. Oh, so so I now need to prove for validation of Edward General Hearn. You're you're well. Firstly, you're never getting validated from the general. <laughs> uh, and number two, all I'm saying is you posted about this incredible trip to Tunisia, and that you ran 30k or whatever it was. Check the Strava, bruv. Oh wait, you can't because you don't follow me. As if I'm going to follow you on Strava. Ethan I'm actually going to unfollow you. you don't, I'm going to unfollow no, you, you on this Instagram. Every week. You said this last week. Don't push me. Okay. You will cry your fucking I eyes out. If, would, I, to be if fair, I unfollow yeah. you on Instagram, no, yeah, you okay, literally right. Edward, wouldn't Edward, be able to get Edward, out of no bed. More. No more. Um, what's the crack? Whoop, still intact. What's your recovery saying? Terrible today. Is it? 35, 40%. But you know why I don't want to get a whoop? Yes, we know, Parsons, what's because it'll tell you that you shouldn't train. And some days you've just got to train and you're so fit and you're such a marathon runner that you can't afford with your training schedule to be told that your recovery is low so you can't train. Oh, bore off. Okay. Why are you with Bugsy Malone? Doing a pod. Uh, a pod? My pod. Is that, is that your guy? <laughs> 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 Oh, right, lastly, dear. before we start, there is a chance that the hardest geezer will be going on your podcast. Hopefully. Do you know who sorted that out? Oh. So pay homage. Um, I don't know where Ross Garrity is, but realistically, actually, no, I think it's about time I, I return the favour. But I'm out there in Tunisia pulling the strings. Little text from Ross Garrity. Oh, do you reckon you could sort it? Oi, hardest, you're right. 
Come over here, mate. Two sex. I know you're very big time. I'm not sure he's at the top of your list. I know you've got Stephen Bartlett and a lot of other ones to do. <laughs> Would you speak to the, to the general? And he said, I'll think about it. Oh, really? No, Great. He, he looks like he's coming on. Does it? So thanks, I'm hoping thanks, for thanks, seven Charlie. million name drops. Thanks, thanks, Charlie. Because <laughs> I could never have done that without you. No. Well, why Couldn't was I just contacted DM'd? then? Because, because you're out there and Ross Garrity probably thought, when Parsons get, gets his head out of hardest geezer's bum hole, <laughs> maybe you, and, and actually surfaces for air, <laughs> maybe we can ask him about the pot. <laughs> right, let's get into it. We're in Manchester. Decent little fight week. Yeah. It's nice to have these UK shows. They're important. It is, and a great main event. You know, I think um, we've seen some great domestic fights right now, and this is another one. And I was surprised that both guys took this fight. It makes so much sense. They're both... Coming off victories, Jordan in particular a great victory. They both want shots at the world title, but at the same time, fight each other. And both of them fancy it. You know, both think they win the fight by knockout. It's a pure 50-50 fight. So looking forward to it and a big chance for both. Um, on the undercard, two world title fights. Yeah, um, Ellie Scottney in a great fight. Uh, big unification fight against Lefer, 18 and 0. Uh, Ellie's always in entertaining fights, and really the road to Undisputed is right there in front of her. Rhiannon Dixon's a great story, you know, stepping up in a very tough fight. I think it's a 50-50 fight against Karen Carabajal, who we saw in a great fight with Katie Taylor. She won rounds against her. She's a, she's a, she's a real talent. Um, and of course, Michael Gomez Jr. against Kane Baker. Got Brandon Scott back on the card, William Crawler, uh, Jack Turner, Steve Clark, um, and Jimmy Sainz. So good night of boxing incoming. Yesterday was a happy day for you. Yesterday? Come on. What was the big news that dropped yesterday? Oh. How have you even needed reminding? Well, because normally with you it's something silly. Like, I didn't know you were actually going to be serious. I thought you were going to say, I don't know. But <laughs> Boots, Boots messaged me last night and uh, he said to me, wow, we've really broken the internet. I can't actually remember an announcement that had the same kind of noise that the boot signing had this is one of the greatest signings of all time and i said five years yo i've actually been That's trying mad, to sign that interview yeah. from five years and, and ago, i've been trying to sign boots for five years because i watched him years ago and i thought this kid is unbelievable and i've had to graft and graft and graft he's had his promises he's you know he's stayed true and he's stayed loyal but it was time for him to make his move and i am lucky and blessed and honoured. It's sick, isn't it? That he's, that he's, sorry? It's sick. That he has chose to sign with Matrim and Zone. Because I believe we've got arguably the pound for pound number one in the sport. And we've well, got to make not sure. Not right we do. now. Mate, I'm telling you, I've said for a long time, I think he's the best All world the potential in the world. to be no, but I, pound for pound Yeah, but you've one. got to prove it by beating the, 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 level, the opposition. And that's going to be one of our biggest challenges, is making sure we build him enough. So what's the plan? So the plan is he has a mandatory, which purse bids were called last week. We want to try and make that fight in Philadelphia, June, early July, get that out of the way, and then look for the big fights. Because if you look at the 147-pound division, a lot of the big names are moving up to 54 now. So the other champions, which will be Marios Barros, um, Stanionis, hopefully they're fights that we can make for unifications. I believe Boots will be undisputed at 147 if we can make it happen, and 54. I think he can beat Terence Crawford. That's the fight that I want to push to make. Is this the best your US stable's ever been? Yes. Yeah. I mean... Like summer for you... I've got to tell you, we are talking to... four or five fighters that are all... I think pound for pound top ten. But worst case scenario, pound for pound top fifteen. So and Crawford's in there. The... We're on fire, and if we want to do it, we could gather signings that will just put us on another level. But what I don't want to do, Parsons, is give false promises yeah, yeah, yeah. and tell people, you must box three times a year, and they end up boxing once, because that's happened time and time again, and it's not what we're about. Do you think there's a chance that, like... Obviously, with everything going to Saudi and a lot of our like, main good domestic crop going over in Saudi, you look at Cordina, etc. Um, what is the UK vision moving forward for the rest the, of the, the year? The UK vision is to make big fights and to push 
fighters into taking real fights. Like this on Saturday night, right? Classic example. We could have had Jordan Gill in Peterborough versus someone you've never heard of. Zelfa Barrett in Manchester against someone you've never heard of. Stick them in together. That's why I'm getting so pissed off with fights that are being ordered, yeah? Not that you hope to make, ordered falling through and not being made because they're the fights that we should be seeing. Um, so, obviously, we've got some big nights coming up in the UK, particularly Taylor against Catterall, which is just, what, six weeks away now? And we've got to make sure we make some big fights for, for June, July. We know there's massive fights happening all over the world. We've got to make sure we're doing it here too. Before we go into fights being ordered and not happening, do you see yourself getting to a point with the schedule and with the amount of fighters that you have both in the States and in the UK with Saudi Arabian commitments that you end up having two shows on a night across territory, yeah, a UK yeah, we, show and a US before. show? Um, Isn't that usually like... It's not ideal because obviously the aim is to push the show and, and the product on the zone and you don't really want two shows the same night but that will have to happen um, you know we're, we're staging shows all around the world you know that the 5v5 announcement is on Monday it's the best card I've ever seen top to bottom wait till you see the promo as well with me and Frankie it's unbelievable yeah, he was as gassed as you were yesterday was talking about it yeah it was really good and um, like I said Monday 5v5 announcement with Bivol better be the best card I've ever seen top to bottom um, let's talk about Isaac Chamberlain and Chev Clark and the whole situation there. Initial reaction now, we've had a response from Mick Hennessy saying it's nothing to do with boxer mm. and team. You said it was like the fifth pull-out, i.e. Yeah, like... I, I never mentioned the name of boxer and but Scott. But the fifth pull-out would listen, imply... They're involved with Isaac Chamberlain. Come on, let's not beat around the bush. They've done all his previous fights. They've been talking to him about a Vidal Riley fight, but I don't really care who pulls who out. Just don't do it an hour before the purse bid when you you knew you were going to do it anyway. And like, you know, Mick tweeted or whoever tweeted saying, oh, we dropped you the courtesy to let you know an hour and 20 minutes before the purse bid. Well, what about the fact that we've had to send people down to Cardiff? They to then said that you should post a... Fucking... I don't want to take a chance to make sure that my post arrives with the British Boxing Board of Control. How's that actually looking after the best interest of a fighter's career? What happens if something goes wrong with Royal Mail and the bid doesn't arrive? You turn up in person to bid. Anyway, I just, Chev Clark's been waiting for two months for that fight. If they weren't gonna fight him, just pull out before. Adam Azim pulls out the day before the purse bid. Richard Riakpour pulls out on the day of the purse bid. Um, Fraser Clark pulls out on the day of the purse bid. It's just annoying. Like, I don't mind you not being good Did enough. Did you expect it? Yeah, because Chef Clark beats Isaac Chamberlain seven days a week. And what do you call me? Silver Spoon Baby. Yeah, that was a bit... It was a bit muggy, to be honest with you. I think he's a tit. I'll be honest with you. Like, I don't know what Isaac's problem is, but... He said yeah. he was happy to come over to Matchroom recently, too, at one he point. He, he said, I want to go to Matchroom, make me a big offer. But, you know, the, the problem is with people like Isaac Chamberlain is he just gets told things and he believes everything he hears and he's just told what to do. So for Chev now, Vidal Riley? Uh, no, I think we're going to try and make, speak to the board and find out who can fight for the British title and try and make it ASAP. Love the Vidal Riley fight. Did he break a couple of ribs in that fight? I don't know, Isaac Chamberlain kept going on about it. Yeah, but, but yeah. I so, think so yeah. we want Chev boxed in January. Chev was supposed to fight in April. So all this fucking around, it's just delaying his opportunity to fight. So we want him to fight for the British title ASAP. Uh, Carl Froch has gone in on Frank Warren uh, for holding Turkey Allo Sheikh's hand uh, and said that he's treating him like his daddy and all sorts. What do you make of it? Um, Frank Warren's come back and said it's culture. You know, yeah, it is. No, it, it, of course it is. I mean, that's just, you know, it's a, it's a show of respect and hospitality. Um, yeah, I mean, look, they're back and forwards all the time, those two at the moment. So... Um, Do you want to stay out of Froch's firing line for now? No, I don't mind. Froch has had a pop at me before. I'll, I'll have a pop back at him. It's very good content. Right. Yeah, I actually like his channel. I don't know how it's doing. You might know, but yeah, I, I like it. I think I think Frotch is very opinionated. The one thing with Frotch is he don't really care who he upsets, which I guess people like. Final message: Had a Saturday night. 
Saturday night, great show in Manchester. Tune in, big main event, Zelfa Barrett against Jordan Gill. Ellie Scottney goes for a unification. Rhiannon Dixon looks to win a world title. Michael Gomez against Kane Baker. Steve Clark, Jimmy Sainz, Brandon Scott. Jack Turner, look out for him as well. El Terrier. Um, I've missed one out. Oh. To be Jordan Flynn. Don't forget Jordan Flynn. Cameron Vong pulled out. He stays on the card. Brandon Scott done that. William Crawler, look out for him as well. Big night, Manchester. Don't miss it. We get it, an Bush. angry thumbnail, like really angry, like animated, just to get the viewers in, in like in burst. Why don't you do that one instead? All right, mate. See you later. Oh, oh. You've got to have your mouth open like you're talking. That's better. More like it, Bosch.